I came back from the dead and destroyed my ex-fiancé's life insurance money plans. For some backstory, I, now 34 male, was raised by a single mom because my dad passed away when I was younger, but I had many male role models and older brothers and he left behind a generous life insurance policy, so I largely had a good upbringing. However, I was not ever very social and from my early teens I spent a lot of time in front of my computer. This habit got worse as I went to college and it resulted in me spending 80% of my time gaming, working, reading, or whatever on a screen. As a result, I was not very attractive and quite obese at the age of 20. For these reasons, I never really dated and did not even lose my V-card until I met my ex-fiancé. On top of this, I was raised very religious because my mom became really religious after the death of my father, so I always thought it was a bad idea to play the field. The only thing I had going for me was that I had become somewhat proficient in several coding languages and expanded on these in college. I would not say that I am a good IT person or coder, but with a little bit of coding knowledge and a lot of creativity you can create residual income streams, and I had a decent job in IT where I could work from home three days a week. At the age of 24, I was still overweight and a social reject, but through my mom I met a woman from her Bible study that would eventually become my ex-fiancé, now 36 female. We hit it off and started dating. She had a two-year-old son at the time and they became the only thing in my world that I cared about. It did not take me long to get physical. All those years of pretending I was saving myself went out the window when I finally had the chance to lose it. To be honest, she really broke me out of my shell, I had become more sociable within a couple months of meeting her. I even took on a fatherly role for her son and within six months of dating she got pregnant. Being the religious person I was, I immediately proposed and wanted to marry before the birth of the baby. Then she dropped a bombshell on me. She was still legally married. To a guy in prison. This did not bother me too much as she had always talked about her troubled past and I thought I would be the one to save her from it anyway so I just took this as it came with the territory. She began the divorce proceedings shortly and we planned to get married as soon as those were finished. I was riding high after the baby was born and I thought I had really carved a place for myself in the world. I even started losing weight and spent less time online than ever. She was always kind to me and I thought we let each other know everything we were thinking. Boy was I wrong. There were a few red flags that I was too love-struck to see. 1. She told me early on that the only reason she got involved with my church was that she was on probation and had pending court cases and thought it would help her case. 2. Despite me earning a comfortable six-figure income with side projects and my main IT job, she insisted that she keep her part-time job and my mom had to help me take care of the kids to deal with it. 3. She knew way too many people, like what suburban mom with a secretarial job has 200 contacts in her phone? 4. We kept delaying our marriage due to sick relatives or other issues, although she did go through with the divorce to the prison guy. Then something happened that shook me out of her spell. She got pregnant for a second time and this time with twins. We had only been with each other for about four years and we were about to have four kids. Two more than I thought I would ever have. She claimed she was on birth control at the time, so we were not using protection. Anyways, after the twins were born I started seeing my doctor about a vasectomy and my ex-fiancé encouraged it. I wanted to get some swimmers frozen before the, the operation because we could completely change our minds in five years. So I go in for the visit and the doctor comes out to tell me that my man juice count was low and they were mostly immobile, but this problem might be temporary and I should try to eat a healthier diet and stuff for a few weeks and come back. When I came to the second appointment and the same problem arose, the doc started doing some investigating, but you know where this is going. So, the doctor says that it's likely that I am infertile, this turned out to not be completely true, as I now have a child that I know is biologically mine, but it still propelled the following events. I mentioned that I had three biological children and the doctor looked anxious and started talking, but I was in shell shock and did not really know what he was saying. I think I left the doctor's office before they were even done with me. I did not even get in my car, I just walked until it started to get dark and eventually called an Uber to get home. My fiancé was worried and already asleep inside and I just lied to her and told her my car broke down, phone died, and I was at the mechanic late and forgot to let her know. I fell asleep and woke up the next day and immediately got on the computer to research similar stories and started to give myself false hope. The first post I read was about how fertility assessments are not true and I should 100% get a test. I thought for sure this would show the doctor was wrong, but I got the test back and within a week I knew the kids were not mine. The first person I told was my mom. I went to her house and cried for the first time in my adult life. She consoled me and then told me a story that I was never meant to hear. Essentially, I am the product of an affair myself and that dad actually died from an odd on pain meds after he found out. Well, I don't know why the heck my mom thought this would comfort me, but in reality it just gave me an unhealthy view of women for a while. After the story and calming down, she insisted that I man up and honor my commitment to these kids because I am the only father those kids had ever known. Up to this point I had always been a pushover, and I really considered her words to me for about 24 hours before I completely snapped. I called my fiancé and told her I had to stay the night at my mom's house because of a family issue and she offered to make us dinner which I declined. At this point, the twins are about 6 months, the boys are 2 and 5 years old. I won't lie and say that I felt nothing for these kids, but it was hard to look them in the face and I knew I was done being their father. I knew this would tear them up and damage them, but I couldn't stand to hear them say Dada to me because every time it was like a knife in my heart. I kept my cool and did not expose anything and my mom did not say anything I assumed because she thought I was manning up. I spoke to an attorney, because I wanted to get myself off the birth certificates of these children and I thought I could seamlessly slip out of this situation because we were not married. Unfortunately, after going through the paperwork and financials, since I had tangled much of our finances and I took on a fatherly role, I would be responsible for at least the boy's child support and she would get equity in the house and my side businesses. 
Basically, the lawyer said that I would likely be on the hook for something like 25% of my income for many years to come. I pretty much ghosted my lawyers after paying them their initial fee, because I did not like the idea of state-enforced cucking. The revenge starts here. I started to make a plan to disappear and leave them all with as little as possible. The start of this was destroying all of my passive income streams and getting myself fired. Getting myself fired was easy, but it got a bit cringe, basically did some of the stuff from office space, smashed an office printer in the courtyard, didn't do anything while working from home except send memes to coworkers, but I did not do anything to clients because my boss was actually a friend of mine, but my office mates had a good time watching this. After this, I did not even try to file for unemployment and began living off our savings. My ex fiance let me handle all the financials despite both of our names being on everything, so she did not notice our account slowly draining of money and the financials going to chaos because I left her checking account filled with a few thousand. My credit card debt skyrocketed because I stopped paying our cards lol. I sat there for months wondering if I should end it and follow in the footsteps of my would be father, but ultimately decided against it. I got ancestry test kits for the kids in an effort to find who their actual father was, because I was hoping to get them away from my ex, but this resulted in even weirder findings. Essentially the oldest child was a cousin or half-brother to his siblings and so the prison guy's brother must have gotten her pregnant, also I did not see any family members from the test that I thought would be a good fit. So that was the end of that investigation. I also tried to distance myself from my mom, as I had become disgusted by what she did to my dad and her newfound cheater allegiance with my ex. I formulated a plan to get away, far away, from everything by just vanishing on a hiking trip. I really hyped up this hiking trip and claimed I would be into that location for a week alone with my thoughts in the trails. Before the trip I took the then six-year-old out for ice cream and cried for the second time in my adult life. The six-year-old was obviously distraught over seeing his dad cry and started trying to calm me down. I guess I was crying that I had to leave him, and I told him I was sorry dozens of times but I think he was just confused about the situation. I was more concerned about losing him, because I knew he was not my child and I was able to form a bond anyways. I left that afternoon and actually made my way to the lodge and checked in. Now the next part I will mostly skip because I am not sure if it was legal or illegal or whatever, but cut to six months later and I have a new name and live in a new city where I was able to restart my IT career and was slowly working toward my old income status again. I started stalking my ex on Facebook and other social media. I won't lie, it was cathartic to say the least. The chaos of them trying to get into accounts must have been hell and she figured out that our comfortable finances were not so comfortable after all. Begging for money on Facebook is so trashy. Once again I won't mention the legal stuff, but a lot of people went looking for me and I considered phoning the police to let them know that I was okay, but decided against it, eventually had to pay a hefty fine for this, but it was well worth it. I worked on myself for a long time and got into great shape. Lost my religion and descended into a hedonistic lifestyle. I became unrecognizable. I continued stalking this woman for about a year when I heard she was dating a new guy and got pregnant almost immediately. Of course, my mom was still in her life taking care of my supposed children while she was doing god knows what. Then on the one year anniversary of me leaving she posted a memorial page. For me. This made me decide that my revenge was not quite done and I decided to call up my brother and let him know I was alive. My brother and I had drifted over the past 10 years, but he was blood and was always there when I was younger. I told him why I did what I did and we caught up and I asked him not to tell anyone yet and he agreed. But then he told me about my mom and my ex fiance suing my insurance company to honor my life insurance. Somehow, she had managed to keep up this policy going despite its hefty cost. The payout would be substantial, seven figures, and she would be awarded the premiums that she had paid since my alleged death if she won. While I am not the kind of uncivilized person that would defraud an insurance company so I started my plans. I drove the 1000 mile journey to my old city when I heard she had an upcoming hearing and listened to Highway to Hell half the way down. I went to the court early and sat down. Now at this time I had grown a beard, lost 60 pounds and generally looked good. I looked so different that my fiancé and mother passed right by me in the court without giving me a second look. I thought they would be meeting in a big courtroom and I was already planning to barge in and yell something about objecting and being a cringe lord like usual. But they ended up going to a small room with some lawyers from the insurance company. I decided frick it and knocked on the door several times until they opened it. They were all confused to see this scraggly dressed man with a beard, and I simply said I believe you are trying to settle the issue of whether I am dead? My ex fiance realized it was me almost immediately and let out a gasp or something. But the lawyers were just confused. Everyone ended up stepping outside the room and a whirlwind erupted and the bailiffs were called over. My ex screamed and slapped me and they had to actually put handcuffs on her. This was a big deal for the insurance company I guess and the lawyer's boss and client actually showed up and asked for statements and everything. Even a detective showed up and I started to regret coming but I gave my statement and did not really lie about anything, but I was vague about where I was currently living. I ended up staying in town for almost a month, and it was a crazy month in a cheap motel. I showed evidence of my ex's cheating to anyone who cared and I tried to meet with the kids, but the youngest did not know me and the then 7 year old told me to screw myself, which is fair I guess. The police were pissed off and started civil litigation for the costs of searching for me, a detective or something actually flew in from another state to question me. Luckily this whole time I did not get arrested for anything as I did not want my fingerprints being linked to my new name and such. Essentially I had to pay a large fine and immediately paid the fine in cash to the surprise of the police. As far as I was concerned I was done with this town. My ex fiance served me a civil lawsuit for multiple different things and my mom helped, but I was a leaf in the wind long before anything came of it. I am back in my new city and never planned to go back. I stopped spying on them after a few months of ruining her insurance plans and moved on with my life. This happened some years ago and I am much better off now, 
but I am tired now and need to go to sleep. If there is interest I will let you know what happened with me after all this. Update 3 days later, hello everyone, I only want to do one update and lay it all out. Mostly I just wanted to let people know where I went with my life, because a lot of people seem interested. I am not going to say anything about how to disappear because we can't discuss potential crimes on this board, but look up the case of how Jack Barsky, a former KGB spy entered the US and obtained credentials. Literally millions of undocumented immigrants do this to be able to work for companies in the US as well. Uncle Sam just wants those taxes paid. I'm not sure about the details of the insurance investigation and how they were looking for me, but I never got so much as a phone call from them before I met them in person. I have no intention to try to seek revenge anymore, because I believe violent delights have violent ends now. As far as I am concerned, my ex fiance's life is hard enough and anything else I did would just hurt the kids. After everything blew up with my ex, I left the town and did not reach out to my brother anymore and even stopped checking up on the situation with my ex. Having no family and friends and starting over in the world is lonely and terrifying, but equally exciting and hopeful. So how did I reset my life upon reaching a new city? Well I had a lot of money and cash that I used to stay in a motel for a few months while I got all my documents in order and looked for work. Because I thought that my home computer would be searched when I went missing, I could not really plan much of this stuff beforehand. I realized that without a college degree linked to your name, it was difficult to find a job with my skill set. So I decided to just make my own company and post advertisements about setting up custom dispatch software, editing videos and presentations, among other tasks. I only received a few different jobs doing this and it did not even pay my living expenses. After I did a few jobs for the same company, I made friends with a project manager and got hired at a reasonable salary. To this day, my finances are only about 70% of what I was making before, but I'm happy with what I have. I spent a lot of time finding people with similar stories on the internet and eventually got involved with a men going their own way, MGTA, group. We basically just talked crap about women all the time and the positive feedback loop made me a pretty resentful and misogynistic person. I went so far as making fake accounts to harass women online, so I don't want to go into any more details because I am a bit embarrassed and remorseful now. I got on Tinder and started hooking up with women to make up for lost time. Throwing money around and lying to them became a way of life for me and I would cheat on basically every woman I got with because I thought they were all doing it too. I got caught and I would pretend like I didn't understand why they were mad with me until they left or tried to forgive me just for me to do it again. Not proud of this either. A couple of years ago one of the women that I was sleeping with regularly got pregnant and came to me all excited with the news. Now I immediately accused her of cheating and threw her out of my apartment and there was just a look of shock on her face. Remember, I thought I was infertile so in my mind I just put another thought in her place. I continued to mock her for a bit and even messaged my MGTOW buddies about what I did. I openly confessed to cheating on her and showed her proof. I agreed to a paternity test while she was still pregnant just because I didn't want her to get the courts involved and I was shocked with the result. I cried and tried to hug her and she screamed, threw some papers at me and told me she never wanted to see me again. I went home and drank, happy that I was going to be a dad, for real this time, but sad who I had become. Like I said, I don't want you to root for me because I am not a good person. For the remainder of the pregnancy, she would not even speak to me long enough for me to explain my actions, but I totally understood why. When the baby was born, a girl, I showed up to the hospital to sign the birth certificate and at the same time met with her lawyer, which turned out to be her sister, to go over child support stuff that we had already spoke about. I went for a Hail Mary and offered to sign any paper they wanted if she would just have coffee with me for 30 minutes to explain things, she wanted full custody and generous payments. I never got a lawyer because I just wanted to make amends and I thought a lawyer would throw up obstacles to try to protect me or my finances. I met with her for coffee and to my surprise she let me speak uninterrupted for almost 20 minutes. I did not completely tell her the truth about my past, but she understood why I wanted a paternity test, but did not excuse my behavior in mocking her, throwing her out, and cheating. I signed the papers, but begged her to let me see my daughter and be part of her life. She said that I was unstable and that I needed intensive therapy before that would ever happen. Of course I obliged to the therapy. I learned a lot in therapy and did a lot of research about the fallout of cheating and whatnot. Turns out there are a lot of women who had been hurt by cheaters and homewreckers too, duh, and that my view of women was toxic to say the least. I cut it off with my MGTOW buddies because I thought that atmosphere would be a detriment to my progress. I don't want to attack that group, because I think there are some good people in that group that are just broken and looking for answers. I think having a baby girl was a real punch in the gut to stop treating women so poorly. I was finally able to see my daughter when she was 7 months old and began supervised visits every other weekend. I had dutifully paid the child support and made every attempt to talk to her mother and try to make amends. One night after our daughter we got drunk and started kissing which turned into love making. When we woke up the next morning she was embarrassed and just asked me to leave, but she made it seem like she kind of wanted to make things work. It took a long time but we moved in together after she lost her job to COVID and are currently living together. Her family hates me and this has held us back from marriage talk or anything. Hell, I skipped our daughter's second birthday celebration because her lawyer sister didn't want to see me. I hope this turns out well for me, and I know I already have better than I deserve. For now, the pandemic has me working from home and my girl takes care of our daughter and makes me food and such. She is still suspicious of me and comes into my office to see what I am doing regularly, but I don't mind. For now, I'm just going to try to be there for my daughter and try to make it up to her mom. I'm still trying to think of things I can do or say but for now I'm still in Zoom therapy and just doing my best. I don't think I can ever really tell anyone everything, which is why I decided to tell the strangers of Reddit. I am sorry for those people that thought I was a hero in my initial post. 
please don't let your hatred boil inside you friends, I almost missed out on something great and I may still miss out if I am not careful. This is going to be the only update, unless I come back years from now to tell you all what happened. Best of luck to everyone. Correction update, hey, sorry for the confusion, the KGB spy I was thinking of was Jack Barsky, but playing too much Call of Duty had Yuri Bisminov on my mind. He essentially combed through obituaries from around the time he was born to find someone to become. It is actually a really interesting story because he got so tied up with the paperwork that he had trouble getting a birth certificate so that he could get an American passport. His original job was to befriend higher-ups in media and politics so that he could get information on them, but most of his American cultural training was 20 years out of date and he looked like a fool. If you have someone willing to give you a birth certificate, then it is a lot easier to get all the other paperwork you need. Obviously if you get in any real trouble, then you are screwed double time on your identity, but most people go their entire life without any real trouble with the law.